Again, welcome back to Programming Logic and Design Course. This is Unit 2, Lecture Number 2, Elements of High Quality Programs. So in these lectures, our main objective is to cover the concept of modularization and also how to modularize a program. A module is a subunit of programming problem. So normally, if we have a large problem to solve, we can break the problem into a subunit or sub-problems, and then we solve them individually. Later, we integrate all the problem together. And that's the concept of modules. So a modules will be a subunit of programming problem. I have a problem to solve using programming language. I will break the program into two, or the problem into two pieces, and I may have two modules. Also, it depends on the programming language. In Visual Basic, a module is called a subroutines also procedures. In C++ language or C, Java, we can call it functions or methods. Now in our program language or in our problem, to call a module is to use the module name to invoke the module, causing it to execute in the main function. So for example, in C++ language, we may write a function and we have to call the function inside the main function using the function name because execution of a program normally takes place in the main function. Now, modularization is breaking down a large program into modules. So I may use the term also, I have a large problem, breaking the problem into subunits, smaller problems. It's also the concept of modularization. This is called the functional decomposition. So we are breaking the problem into pieces. Also, this brings us to the concept of abstraction. And when we say something abstract, we mean we can explain the thing. And the most important concept of the thing will be explained, but we shall not go more detail. A good example would be a, a driver. I drive a car but I don't know how the car engine works. So I know how to, again, steer the wheel using the brakes, everything. By detail of the car, how the engines work, how the gas burn, I don't know anything about it. So this will be an abstract level. So the concept of abstraction means paying attention to important properties, why we are ignoring the non-essential details. This is also concept of selective ignorance. Also newer high level programming languages use abstract a lot. For example, in Java or C++, we have abstract class, where in those class, we don't have to, again, come up with the data members or the detail of the methods implementation. And here we see also we use English like vocabulary and also one broad statement correspond to dozens of machine instructions. Modules also provide another way to achieve abstraction. Also easier to divide a tax among various people because normally we know in a real world computer programming or software project, we may have a large problem and this problem will break down into unit subunits and each person in the project, the group project members, we may assign a tax to each individual in the project. So here, yeah, easier to divide the tax among various people. Later, if everybody finish, we again integrate the system to combine the whole system. So here yeah, we say professional software developers can write new programs quickly by dividing the large programs into modules the concept of divide and conquer. The whole advantage of modules is if we have a complex problem and we want to solve it at once, it will be very difficult. The best is to possible break the problem into smaller units. In this way, it will be more easy to solve. So we assign each module to an individual program or a member of the project team. Also, modularization allows us to reuse our code or the work. For example, I may write a code to do a specific work, 
and maybe I can use that code in many program projects. So reusability, the features of modular programs, allow individual modules to be used in a variety of applications. Uh, many real world examples of reusability. Also reliability, modules are assure that the modules has been tested and proven to function correctly. Also, we need a main program, especially if we are writing a standalone application because execution will take place in the main program. So here we say a main program will be the basic steps or the main line logic of the program. It includes a module, and the module also may have a modular header, the module body. The module body is where the code are, the statement or the expressions. Then at the end of the module, we may have a return statement. Let's say we have a function to find a sum of two numbers. And when we find the sum, we can use the return statement to return the sum of the two numbers back to the function. Now, naming a module is similar to naming a variable. So again, depending on the programming language you are using, we follow the regulations or the rules of naming any identifiers. So module names are followed by a set of parentheses. Uh, module is same as, again, function. Inside the parentheses is where we have the messages or the data that the module or the function we use to accomplish its task. Sometimes we may write a module or a function uh, without any. For example, I may write a function to print a string on my screen. Most likely, this function doesn't need any data. So the parenthesis or the argument will be empty. But we still have to present the open and close parenthesis. Because that will tell the compiler that this is a, a module a function. Also, we have the flowchart, which we went through in our previous lectures. And we said the flowchart, the symbols used to call a module is a rectangular with a bar across the top. So a little bit different from a process. We remember that symbol to write a process is also a rectangle. Symbol to get input or to get the output on the display is a paragraph. So we need to draw each module separately with its own sentinel symbols. So this example of a, to modularize a program Again, we start, we declare our variables. We have input name, balance, output, another output, output throughout. Now, this is a one full program. We may decide to modularize it by writing a function, maybe to get the input, writing a, a module to get only the output. Then later we are going to call them in the main function. So this example of the pseudo code, Again, we start with our declaration variables, get input, and we print our statements. Now, to modularize a program, we say the statements taken out of a main program and put into a module have been encapsulated. And this is the concept of object-oriented programming. Anytime we mention the concept of encapsulation, we are talking about the security of the data members. So main program becomes shorter and easier to understand. The modules can be reusable. When statement contribute to the same job, we get a, a more greater functional cohesion. So now we have to modularize our program here. We can see our flowchart again, declaration input. This time we didn't write the statement here. But you can see that we are calling the function, or I would say the module name, display address. Now, why we know this is a module? Because it has a parenthesis open and close, which we normally call the argument of the function or of the module, or the parameters of the module. So you can see that the module display address info is to print the address, let's say the address of a customer. So we have this module separately, then we call it in the main method. Now we can see the symbol of calling a module is more or less like a rectangle, but it's different from 
a rectangle we have here because we have some bar over it. Now, if we are doing the pseudocode, it's the same concept. You can see that we are calling the function display address info. And we have the function here. And again, we the function added down, we call it inside the main function. So the main function will be the start and stop section of the pseudocode start and stop. Then here we have display addressing for the function or the module, then we call the module inside the main module. Now, one of the advantage of a, a module also is that uh, if I want to print this address 10 times, I don't have to write the Apple statement 10 times. All I need to do is to call the display address info 10 times. Now, when we discuss about the for loop or while loops, then we can call this module inside the loop and we write it only once and we repeat as many times as we want to call it. So that will be the conclusion of our lectures. And again, see you in our next lectures. Thank you.